if you saw the community post that I put yesterday, you'll know I've not been very well. You know, they say football can sometimes be an end-to-end game. Yeah, use that metaphor. I'm really, I'm really sorry to gross you all out. It's been a rough day, uh, and was a rough night. Uh, I've probably got another rough one to come. But what I will say is I'm going to push through, because I'm really enjoying this Derby adventure. But it's going to be post-com. I can't do live commentary right now without wanting to throw up. So... Sit back and enjoy a kind of quick rundown of some of the games that I've done. I'll do my best to do some post-com, but don't expect it to be entertaining. Pretty much like most of my videos, really. And they're joking. Award-winning series. That's what I think. I have no idea where this has come from. It's probably just the stress of deadline day. So we start off the episode with 30 games played and we are currently 11 points behind the leaders Ipswich but we are still in second place in the division. Not too bad you would say, well as the episode goes on you'll figure that it's not good enough for some people. For our first game I put in a debut for Godwin Malief who's come in at the back uh, and he is obviously going to be replacing Kashina wasn't there and it wasn't the best of starts to be fair. Port Vale got themselves 1-0 up within 7 minutes which is just... Delightful. It's unfortunately a trait that seems to be happening quite a lot with me is that I go behind in games and when I do, I do really struggle to come back, come back and get results. Having said that, we made a pretty decent return uh, with Sibley here teeing up Mendes Lang, but it's an absolutely brilliant save by the goalkeeper. Mendes Lang can't buy a goal at the moment. But on the 21st minute, a bit of genius from Louis Sibley does get us level. Goalkeeper should probably do better, as you'll see on the replay. He gets close enough to it but probably should save it if you're that close to it. What I would say about this, actually, is that obviously on deadline day, there was a chance we were going to sell Louis Sibley. I'm so glad we didn't. He's been my standout player this year, apart from Lungoy, and I'm so glad we didn't sell him in the end. Paul Vell weren't done there, though. They went through on goal here as Ellis Harrison is set, denied by a wonderful save by our brand-new keeper who also made his debut. Should have mentioned that at the start. It was an absolutely brilliant save, and I have to say, I do feel a lot more comfortable with him in goal in comparison to everyone else. You can tell there we go on the attack, though. Lungoy into Mendes Lang. Mendes Lang hits it again, but another brilliant save. A tale of two goalkeepers in this game, for sure. As we approach half-time, Sibley plays the ball into Mendes Lang. He turns, finds Barkhausen free on the right-hand side. Great through ball, and a lovely finish by Tom Barkhausen, who's finally hitting a little bit of form and we're going to need it as we get into the latter stages of the season and our quest for the League One title. We need as many goal scorers as possible, especially as Lungoy seems to be on a little bit of a cold streak at the moment. Speaking of the devil, Lungoy on the ball sets up Sibley, who hits a brilliant shot onto the bar, just doesn't quite make it. But we really dominated Port Vale, to be fair, in the second half. As you can see here, there were shots flying in there. I have to say, lucidly doing his best there to actually stop the ball from going in from his own man. Port Vale weren't without their chances, and that was a brilliant save, as you can tell there, from the goalkeeper again. And we hit the post. We tried absolutely everything, but the goalkeepers in this game were really the story. Simply go through here in the 92nd minute to finish it off for 3-1. Doesn't happen. However, from the resulting corner... Jason Luck whips it in, and it is a debut goal for Godwin Malief. And I have to say, this boy really impressed me in his first game. He was very solid defensively. Nothing really came down his side. You can tell everyone's really enjoying that. He's obviously a popular member of the dressing room. And we managed to notch up ourselves a comfortable 3-1 win away from home. This was weird, though. After that, I had a email from the board saying that my position is under review and under threat. A bit weird, considering that we just won and we're still sat second in the league. Next up, we hosted Burton Albion at Pride Park. And I have to say, this was not one of my finest games. You can tell. They go through here in the 23rd minute. It was a game of few chances and about really being clinical. And unfortunately, Burton were that and we were not. Um, I've already kind of given away what the result is. You can tell by the tone of my voice. It's a decent finish, but you know what happens. We go for on goal here, though. Lovely ball. A quick chance to equalise after four minutes after that goal. But a brilliant set to deny Lungoy, who's not quite at the races at the moment. And you can tell here, though, our goalkeeper kept us in this a little bit. And he's been a very wise investment. But I don't think he can do anything about this one. It's too close range. On the, just more than the stroke of half-time, Burton make it 2-0. And the two goal sum is probably just a little bit too much to come back from, unfortunately. 
It was a very quiet second half, not a lot really happened. I tried changing formations, it didn't really work, and as you can tell there, Burton finished it off with a third goal for them. But we weren't to be denied, uh, we weren't going to give them the satisfaction of a clean sheet. As Dobbin the house elf managed to get himself another shot. Dobbin scores pointless consolation goals. A 3-1 defeat at home. The fans aren't happy, and the performance review, I'm wondering if that put me a little bit under pressure. This is brilliant from Max Bird, saying, oh, we're, we're not really happy about what's going on with the team. Well, maybe it's your fault, Max, considering you're the captain. I made changes to the team in this one uh, for us hosting Accrington. I brought Dobbin in from the start, because Mendes Lang had just been really, really poor. And it did pay off, to be fair, as Dobbin plays really well here, tees up Louis Sibley, and he adds yet another goal to his ever-growing collection in the team. He's just been absolutely brilliant. And in that number 10 position, he scores so many goals. It's unreal. I don't know if he's actually that good or if it's because I just love left-footed players. Not really sure, but I think he's been absolutely brilliant. He's definitely into double figures for the season. Barkhausen goes through on goal here just before half-time. And Lagoy manages to somehow miss another sitter. And you could see, if that were 10 games ago, that's in. We whip in a great ball here, and you won't believe it. But yes, it is. Godwin Malief again. He's just so good in the air. It's unreal how good he is. He's made a very good start to his derby career. Minus the burnt performance, but I didn't have much to do with him. Mendes Lang tees the ball in here to Torre, our other signing, who I brought on for his debut in this match. And I have to say, his second touch there wasn't bad. He smashes it in off the upright. A very, very decent finish indeed. And he wasn't finished there. As you can see here, 85th minute, Tanganga Mendes now into Torre. And he finishes on his right foot this time. Obviously, he can hit it with both feet, which is always a lovely trait to have. And that led us to form. Though Accrington got absolutely battered in this game, by the way. We battered them the first time earlier on in the season away at their place. And we did it again. It's another brilliant header there as Gorbin Malief heads it um, at the goalkeeper. He palms up in the air, really poor goalkeeper, but Torre steams in and heads it into the back of the net. The guy is a physical powerhouse, and it's a debut hat trick. Absolutely unreal as we give Atkinson an absolute mauling 5 0. Very, very impressive stuff, especially from Al Hassan Torre. Brilliant. On to the final game of today's episode, then we travel away to Bristol to take on Bristol Rovers. That's a brilliant West Country accent, Mike. Everyone's going to love that. Dobbin here plays the ball into Graylinger. I kept with the same team um, because we played so well, and Dobbin tees in Lungoy, and he finally, finally ends the uh, the drought with a lovely finish into the far corner. Dobbin is so good at kind of linking up play. As well as scoring, he's got really, really decent touch. This is 24th goal of the season, Christopher Lengoy. It could have, at one point, it was looking like we were on for one every game, but uh, not to be. And as usual, I score, and then five minutes later, we concede. And it's another near post finish. Can't blame the goalkeeper. It's an absolute rocket of a strike. It's just poor defending, really. The first time Godwin Malief kind of gets found out a little Good bit. I just yeah, move the wrong way and just get caught out. Not brilliant. 27th minute and we have another corner and you know what usually happens here as he whips the ball and Goblin Malief heads it but for a change he doesn't actually get it on target. Probably the first time actually in this game he kind of got found out a little bit and didn't have his best performance but having said that we did kind of get back on the front foot and dominate a little bit. Lungoy with another great finish obviously uh, his form is back but the goalkeeper are equal to deny him there. It was just one of those games where the goalie was having a very good one. You can tell he saved another one from Sibley there. Second half comes in and you can tell really that we are all over from the highlights. We're just all over Bristol Rovers here and they can't get out. Dobbin on the ball here. Tees it back to Louis Sibley. He takes one touch out of his feet and hits it into the back of the net. He's just on fire. That's three goals in this episode alone. He gets so many goals from that number 10 position. He's such a useful uh, player to have. I love him. I absolutely love him. And I'd be interested to know who you think your player of the season is, really. Because at the moment, I think it could well be Sibley. Lingoy is the obvious answer. But I think the underlying player who I think has been really good has been Sibley. And maybe Mengi, despite how many goals he conceded. 69th minute, you can tell here, though, that Bristol Rovers missed a brilliant chance to equalise. A really, really good opportunity came their way there. And for some reason, he just headed it wide. He had all the time in the world to pick a spot. And didn't pick it right. Munir came on as well today. Our other left winger that we signed. I have to say he's been very impressive when he has come on. As he comes on here and tries to square it. What about that for a save? Mendes Lang cannot buy a goal. Denied by an absolute worldie from the goalkeeper. It's the best save I've seen on FIFA this year. 
But Mendes Lang was not to be denied. He finally goes through on goal, 82nd minute, and finishes. Lovely little bit of interplay between him there and Torre, who sets him through on goal. So three goals and an assist for Torre in two performances, or two appearances rather. Not bad, you would say. He's been a very, very handy addition to the team. And I'm very, very pleased with our deadline day business. I think it's definitely improved the squad as Torre there nearly just managed to chip the goalkeeper in the last second. A 3-1 win away from home. Three wins out of four for the episode. Not bad, but that still leaves us 11 points behind Ipswich. Obviously, they lost the game, but we missed the chance to kind of gain points on them. We're still only one point ahead of Sheffield Wednesday, and we are not guaranteed a place in the playoffs. Obviously, the board wants to win the season win the season, win the league. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, which is a bit disappointing. But it is what it is. Next time out, then, we'll hopefully have the whole of uh, March, as well as the final game against Exeter. And then there's the big game on April the 1st against Ipswich, which I will be bringing you live. I don't know if you enjoy these post-com episodes. I think it's quite fun to do, um, especially while I'm not feeling 100%. It's a little bit easier because obviously I can kind of break up the editing and just do it better um you might disagree I, I i do enjoy doing it live and it's much more fun but what i will say is thank you very much for watching this episode thanks for your patience and yeah if you've enjoyed it leave a like share subscribe and until i see you again stay cool